the core experience is being pulled into an alternate reality or an alternate state of consciousness by being immersed in a fantasy world. I can go to a fantasy world where I can just try anything and do anything. You know, I can fly. You know, a world that's just an infinite playground where I can just try all sorts of different things. But to some people, it, you know, that hook becomes the main thing and they're really into the puzzles or they're into the skill-based thing or they're in there to compete with their friends and they don't really care what the immersive world thing is like and these are all the different things that games can do. What is powerful about video games? Have they become a modern ritual? The link between games and rituals is a very strong one that goes back centuries, right? Like sport is a great example of a huge component of culture, right? So games have already been kind of um, rituals and you could argue that video games is just another outgrowth of that. Now people are playing games that happen to incorporate more technology. The wonderful thing about right now is that the tools are getting so powerful and so good that two guys in a garage uh, can come up with a massively wonderful game. We're just getting started. People are just starting to do these kinds of games for, for public spaces or like non-standard displays. And the next generation will not have only grown with video games, but will have grown up with the tools to make video games. And they're they're going to have a kind of video game literacy. We no longer have to be merely fans. We can all be authors. And that is so beautiful a thing. There was a time when film was not taken as seriously, uh, or TV was not taken as seriously, or all these mediums are not taken as seriously. I'm sure film was not taken as seriously as books for a long time. If I think what I'm doing is art, and someone who plays the games thinks it's art, and it's really not any third party's place to say it's not art.